Sup, y'all? I decided I'm going to do Game of Thrones recaps for this last season just because I feel like it. So get with it. Let's go. Here it is. So Bran wastes no time in making everything super awkward. We don't have time for all this. The Night King has your dragon. He's one of them now. The wall has fallen. The dead march south. Oh, hey, long lost brother. It's cool you're back and all, but we're all going to fucking die, okay? I mean, think about it. Bran's probably the most powerful dude on this show, and literally no one takes advantage of that fact because of how fucking creepy and off-putting he is. Everybody's just like, so it'd probably be really helpful if we understood the Night King's, uh, his full plan, you know? Maybe we should ask the all-seeing, all-knowing emo bird boy about it. No, man, no. No, you do that, he's just probably gonna bring up seeing your parents get murdered in a dream or some shit. No, we'll figure it out. Although I will say, even though Bran tries his damnedest, for me personally, this show's real king of creepy-ass one-liners is Kyburn. Poor girl. The pox will take her within the year. <laughs> yes, it is an adorable puppy. It's a shame I must boil it for potion later. Also, for the record, it ain't no motherfucking way my man Braun turns on his boys just because Cersei said so. When push comes to shove, he's gonna remember who the homies are. You can believe that shit. Speaking of Cersei, it must be rough having to find a new fake daddy for all your incest devil babies all the time. Somebody needs to get Lord Mori of House Povich for this bitch. God damn. And then fucking Euron is like if Chris Angel was a sex pirate. Robert had a different whore every night. But he still didn't know his way around a woman's body. And the king's there. So, oh, who's got a bigger dick, me or your brother? Roll Tide. This motherfucker here, y'all. All right, so then we get some dragon riding action. I like to imagine the writer's room when they came up with this scene. It's like, hey, you guys know that classic romance trope where uh, the couple kind of flirtatiously chases one another around on horseback as a metaphor for their ongoing romantic pursuit of one another? Yeah, well, I was thinking we do one of those, but we make ours metal as fuck. Huh? And it worked. I fucking love that shit. I also love my man the Hound scene in this episode coming out the gate slinging. You're saying you're good. Is that it? I'm just saying it's a tricky material to know who makes weapons for the wildlings. Cripples and cocksuckers. Which one are you? Oh, gee, yeah, thanks for the axe, appreciate it. Oh, you know what? I don't have any gold to give you for it. Do you take ales, motherfucker? And then, of course, there's this. And your father, your real father, was Rhaegar Targaryen. You've never been a bastard. You are Aegon Targaryen, true heir to the Iron Throne. So how much of his face right there do y'all think is him processing the fact that he's the heir to the Iron Throne? And how much of it do y'all think is him processing the fact that he's been porking his aunt for weeks? What the fuck? He even took her to the waterfall, man. That's like his signature move. What? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a lot to take in. Which is probably what his aunt thought the first time she saw her nephew's dick. This show fucking wild. But speaking of wild, this shit right here got me good, y'all. I have to hope the Night King doesn't come for ah! ah! Fucking goddamn screaming meat wheel. Jesus Christ. Oh, also though, this. The Umber Boy. It's a message. From the Night King. Uh, hold up. Wait, what? A message? A message saying what? Like what message does the Night King need to get across right here? So listen, just to be clear, in case you thought maybe I was taking my corpse hoard for a southern vacation, I wanted you to understand that uh, in actuality, I'm powered only by hate and I'm on a death march to establish my unholy dominion over everything you hold dear. So in order to make that as clear as possible, I've um, decorated this wall with a uh, unspeakable eldritch terror emoji. Like, I don't think a message was really necessary. I feel like both sides kind of know what time it is. Here, I don't really think that was a message. I think it's more just like, I think the Night King's just an artist at heart and uh, corpse collages are his chosen medium. You know, I like to think of him there directing his minions when they were putting that thing together. Okay, the thigh piece on the upper left needs to come down a little bit. No, your other left, that's an ankle. Fuck it, I don't know why I work with whites for fuck's sake. And then we end on a big cliffhanger.
So like, I know right here we're supposed to be thinking, oh shit, how is this about to go down? But honestly, I couldn't help but just thinking mostly like, wait, so hold on. So my man just been sitting out here in the cold this whole time, like all night, like since he talked to Sam about John, like just waiting on Jamie all night. Why? Wouldn't he know exactly what time Jamie's going to show up on account of that being a thing in the world and him knowing all the things in the whole world? Like, Brent, dude, you could have fucking went to bed, rolled your ass back out here this morning. You have to just sit outside all goddamn now. You need to fucking tighten it up. This shit is just unnecessary. I don't... But anyway, I digress. Overall, I loved it. Thought it was flames. Can't wait for the next one. And uh, can't wait to do this next time either. See y'all next time. Love you. Skew. God damn, this motherfucker is hot.